Okay, it's on. Okay. ST. Okay. Good afternoon. I think I'm not going to use this. I'm not going to use the mic for now. Let's see. Okay, good afternoon. Today we're here to talk about unity, the laws of Noah and unity. Now, what are these laws of Noah? The laws of Noah are dating back to the time of the date when Noah, Noah, when the great flood, and God gave these seven principles by which the, the world will not will sustain itself and will not destroy itself. So we're going to ask one of the questions we're going to pose today, is it really possible to have unity amongst people from different religions, different backgrounds, different countries, different upbringings? There's so much that goes into conditioning ourselves. Is it possible to have unity? And it's a very good question. Is it possible? Can we have unity? If you're asking it, yes. The, no, the, the answer is we could have unity, but the, 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 uh, there's the Talmud, which brings it a, a uh, the Talmud in Sanhedrin, tractate Sanhedrin, asks the question, and it says, Tanun Abonon, a rabbi is taught that why was a person, Adam, created singular, why? Why was, it, why was Adam created as an individual rather than creating the pairs or so on? The answer is given because God wanted that, the, that we, we, because of the righteous and because of the wicked. The righteous, if God created, let's say, two people, someone can say, well, I'm inclined, to, I'm the son of the righteous, therefore I have to be righteous. Or if someone's, if someone's from, from the wicked says, well, I'm the son of the wicked, therefore I'm more inclined to be wicked. The answer is, every single one of us has the ability to be, to be good. Free will, choice. And God created also a person as, as one to show him how important it is, how if you save one person, you save the entire world. There's a story, and if you kill one person, God forbid, it's as if you destroyed, it's destroyed the entire world. There's a story about, we have a, 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 a representative from the UN over here. There's a story told about world leaders that were trying to put together a map of the world. And session after session, week after week, they couldn't seem to put, put it together. Finally, a young child comes, a little boy, and after 10 minutes, he throws together the entire map of the world. They're all amazed. They, they go over and congratulate him. He says, Excuse me, young lad, how did you manage to do that? He says, um, Very simply, I put the two eyes together, the nose. On the flip side of the map of the world was a picture of a person. So when we put ourselves together, the entire world falls into place. In other words, we have the ability by our actions not to try to change our world. But let's begin with our own circle of friends, our circle of influences. And by us influencing and, and having an effect on ourselves and our surroundings will ultimately have a, an effect on the entire world. And this is, this is very powerful, what, the, what it says in the Talmud. It's not an easy task, but it, there's a common, then if we have a common goal, a common thread, the laws of Noah are that thread, are that common denominator which unite us. It's, it's, it resonates amongst all people. It's, it's really practical, and, it's, and it also makes sense. That if we're going to live together, like the famous story of Hillel, a, 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 a would-be proselyte came to him and said, I would like to teach me the entire Torah while standing on one foot. Famous story. So Hillel said, prophetic words, what you, what, what you don't want done to yourself, don't do unto others. That is the entire Torah. And the rest, go, back, go and study. Meaning that the entire Torah is based on, on the principle of just don't do unto others. Be concerned. Be, be, treat someone as you, as you want to be treated. 
Don't, don't uh, you know, uh, be genuine, be real. It's not an easy task, you know, as a famous story goes in the Medrash that uh, a, a, a Roman woman asked Rabbi Yossi he asked her, to give you an analogy of the story, he asked her a very simple thing, he says, what is God, if God created the world in six days and rested on the seventh as a Sabbath, what is he busy with? What is he busy with in the last thousands of years? So Rabbi Yossi, the great sage, answered her, he's busy pairing up men and women, making shidduchim, making, making matches. As we all know, she, 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 she laughed and said, you mean to tell me it's such a big deal to make a match? Uh, look, look, I'm going to do it. So she quickly, she called in a, 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 a thousand male servants, and she took a thousand female servants, and she lined them all up, she said, you go to you, you go to who? And they, and they each paired them all up. And at the end, uh, at, and she said, okay, go home. And she said, look, I just managed to do what God has been doing for thousands of years. I managed to, managed to do in a few minutes. How is this possible? So, next day, she wakes up and she hears screaming and howling, commotion. This one is coming with a broken leg. This one came with a, bro with a black eye. And this one's coming with with a bruised leg, you know. Everyone, it's a hot and she says, what, what happened? They could, they says, I can't live with this guy. I can't live with her. They're fighting. They're killing each other. The answer is, she, then she came back to Abiyas and she said, you know what? Now I see it all is true. Because if it takes so much effort between a husband and wife, between man and woman to get along, how much more effort would would it take for all of us? as human beings, to recognize each other, respect that it says also in the Gemara and also in Sanhedrin, Rabbi Ches, in the tractate in Talmud Sanhedrin, it's, it's, it explains further that men, no two people, God minted, God is, 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 Hashem minted from one mint, from one coin, meaning Adam, and no two people look alike. Three, three things distinguish one from another. The curl, the matter, that people don't think alike, they don't look alike, and they don't sound alike. Everyone has their unique way of talking, their unique way of looking and presenting and so on. So what does this mean? Three people, two people don't look alike, they don't, they don't think alike, but yet we're all supposed to live together. The answer is that Hashem wants diversity. He didn't want everyone to look alike. He didn't want everyone to, to be alike. He wants people to be different. He wants, he wants people from Africa. He wants people from China. He wants people from, from, every, from every walk of life. He wants everyone to be exactly who they are. But he wants a commonality, a common thread. And the common thread is the Sheva Mitzvah's Vineer. It's a way to achieve unity because it really resonates. It's, it's telling you, listen, God, it's, it's, we want unity. It says, it says that Shema Yisrael Hashem Alekeinu, one of the, one of the uh, most profound prayers of the Jewish faith is Shema Yisrael, Hear O Israel, God is our Lord, God is one. And we say one, we say God is one, and not God, God is Yachid, which means singular, which implies one could imply by definition that there is two, or three, etc. Whereas unity, God is unity, means that there is only one. The answer is, that God created the world in a fashion whereby it's up to our, our, our us, our individual, to bring out that unity. To bring out the unity of Hashem in the world. And how do we achieve the unity of God? When, it, when a person does a mitzvah, does a commandment, one of the things, the way to connect to God is through His commandments. It's like a great king he, he gives us a task to do. We all get excited. We're like little kids compared to Hashem. Hashem is God. We, how do we connect to Him? By Him giving, giving us a little task, a little, little task, and by us doing this task, we become part of Hashem. We become, we connect to Hashem on a very, very profound level. So this is what it means that we're connecting to Hashem by us. God wants unity in the world.
He definitely wants that there should be unity, there should be harmony, there should be peace. The entire, the entire Torah was given only to bring peace into the world. Only that there should be harmony and peace and unity. But it's up to us, it's up to our, 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 ourselves to create that peace, to create that unity, to unite together. And the way we're able to unite is simply by, by doing a mitzvah. And the mitzvah means a commandment of God. And we bring down, we do, draw down divine light, divi it's a divine uh, energy. Every time we do a mitzvah, we bring it down. That's why the, the, we're put on this earth. That's why we're here in Golis, in exile, to be able to, to gather this, to do these mitzvahs. And by us doing the mitzvahs, we actually have the ability to gather all the sparks and, and bring down divine light. And, and ultimately, when it says when Mashiach comes, the Messiah comes, that this divine light will be apparent for everyone. It says that everyone will see that Hashem Achav Yishmeichad. It says that we read it every day in the till in the in the Reino. It says, "Vahaya Hashem Omelech." I'll call what it's. God will be king over the entire world. He, his name will be one, and he will, he will be one. Right now, our challenge is to see the oneness of God, the oneness of people, and not to to go into what divides us, but rather to look in what what's going to unite us. What is it going to unite us? What is this? What is there's something in this world that's going to unite the people to bring about unity. What's this unity going to bring? How, how do you achieve this unity? Only through, through, uh, through us bringing down this, this divine light. And again, connecting to God on a very, very spiritual level, on a, but, on a, uh, but on the same time, on a, very, on a very mundane level. Mundane meaning that there has to be a, a physical, there has to be a, 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 a connection, there has to be a, a, a divine light, there has to be a a divine uh, uh, connection. And this is what, what the mitzvah is all about. So again, is it, is it achievable? Yes. Is it, is it, is it, is it, does it have the ability, to, do, do we have the ability to, to, to look all alike? No. The answer is, we have to realize that we don't look, that, that, that Hashem has is, is made the world and He's fashioned it in a way that we, brings out this, this divine light. And, you know, I'd like to welcome anyone who's really, this is really about a discussion, and I'd like to welcome Mr. Juke from, from the UN to, to, to comment on a few of the points that I brought up. And obviously from the UN, I'd like to hear, maybe you come up and, 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 and discuss some of the points. Thank you all. Uh, what, what do you think of some of the points? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, um, I come from a, a secular and mundane world, as right. you right. call it. Well, I myself am from the Netherlands. Right. Uh, um, I'm a staff member of the UN. Right. Um, I don't represent the country. Right. But uh, obviously, the UN has daily, hourly unity and disunity. Um, if you go to the, it's only 30 blocks away, right. as you know. Right. Uh, but if you would go on an average day, uh, we have this new white box there, which has like seven or eight meeting rooms. It has all 192 member states of the UN represented, at least those who, 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 who care to come. Uh, many of the smaller ones not always are there. But, and there's disagreement and disunity on anything that you can think of. Mm -hmm. On human rights, on family, on education, on health. There's always some point that uh, one disagrees on. Yesterday, I don't know if you read the paper, this is just one example from yesterday, just comes to mind. There was a very thorny discussion on uh, what they call extrajudicial extra judiciary executions. Now that's not a topic that you can have a light discussion about, obviously. Right. This is something that is the, being discussed in the Human Rights Committee of the UN, and it is being debated, and every two years it comes back, and they really look at the text of these paragraphs, of these resolutions, and disagree and, and agree. And yesterday, for the first time, there was discontent, disunity, on uh, the fact that uh, a reference was made to uh, executions on the basis of sexual orientation. Mm. Now you can imagine with 192 member states, there's quite some disagreement over that. Actually, the U.S. pushed very hard for this uh, text to be reinserted, even though when it was approved, with 93 votes in favor and 55 mm. against. Right. Actually, when the entire resolution was discussed, the U.S. abstained because there is some history of executions in this country that. Uh, from a legal point of view, could be interpreted as against this particular text. 
just to indicate, just to give right, you an right, example right, 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 right. of the daily disunity uh, and attempts at unity that we have at the UN. Right. Um, but at the same time, I just one more point. Right. Well, in this case of yesterday, yes, in the end we did have some kind of unity. There was a unity among the 192 that, you know, we, we agree first that the majority prevailed. So that right. means the 93 prevailed over the other 55, and the 20 that didn't kind of show up, bad luck for them. Right. Okay, that's how it works. That's how democracy works. We have some of that in the UN. Right. Um, but it does show that we have some agreement that right. can be reached uh, as well. Right. So that is, of course, very important. Now, um, then I just, a second, last point, just want to refer to what you call as uh, beginning with your own little circle. I mean, of course, uh, as a staff, uh, I try to facilitate this process. And obviously, it's not easy to get 190 sheep across uh, the fence at the same time and you know, make them all jump in the correct direction. Right. And it is very challenging. And actually, as you know, I mean, uh, you're trying to get accreditation with you and right. yourself, and right. uh, you are part of a big group of non-governmental organizations that are accredited, and it's pretty hard. And it, you know, they'll ask you very sticky, difficult questions. Why do you want to do this? Right. Why, why are you here? Right. Why do you bother? And we're trying with you right. and with other organizations that have totally different uh, agendas, yeah. agendas yeah. opposite sometimes to what the others have. There's pro-life and pro-choice and there's, you know, right. all kinds of geopolitical things that go on. But we do try to help because we think that organizations like you uh, support the number one objective of UN, which is peace. peace. Yeah. And of course, I think that many religions uh, have that in common with the UN, that that's basically what the main purpose is. Well, the, the idea of, un of the UN, by definition, yeah. its, its name is it's United Nations. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. It, it, and, and as a famous quote on the on the wall over there, that, that, that uh, the quote of Isaiah that the, the swords will be ships. Yes, exactly. That, that this this is, but the question remains: is by by getting everyone trying to get everyone over the fence, so to speak, does that create unity? Or trying to partial find and imperfect unity? Yes. It's, <laughs> yes. It is. Uh, I, I guess it's, a, it's yeah. better than, than, than having. But, the, I mean, yeah. we do have examples that you know differences are agreed upon, right. and that countries are helped. The conflicts are being solved at the UN or in a bilateral way, and uh, create peace. Um, I think that uh, you can think of the, pecu you know, the peculiarities of what you think, but without the, the presence of the UN right. and yeah. the West Bank, it would be a lot harder. Without the presence of the UN. In Haiti, things would be a lot harder. Without all the work that is going on food and education right. and health in Africa, it would be a lot harder. How do you feel about the, the, the idea of, of unity, bringing together people together via by common ground to to the seven laws of Noah? Yes. Well, of course, I, I, I support that. Of course, uh, and of course, we recognize in the UN also the diversity of religion that actually accepts the goals of the UN and actually works very hard uh, to, uh, to achieve those goals. And I invite you, right. uh, because uh, particularly under the, in the last 10 years, under the former Secretary General and the current one, there is a, a sense of engaging of the world's diverse societies and the world's the world diverse religions towards the goals of the UN for peace and development. And yes, of, sure, of course, there will be disagreement on how to achieve that, but there is a will, and right. there are some, uh, there are quite a lot of efforts being made on that. And we, I, again, I invite you to take part in this. Yeah, I, well, can, I can help we'll you with that. I can, yeah. I, I appreciate yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. And you will see well, many familiar uh, faces from the religious world. Uh, some of them New York based. And the idea is obviously to bring about the... Yeah. Thank you very much yeah, for coming. Well, welcome. And uh, thank you. I'll Sorry. stick around. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, he has, right? yeah, he has yeah, a question. We have a question. For, of course. For, um, I read recently that Canada came out in favor of Israel, and therefore they lost a lot of power in the UN. They lost uh -huh. some seats or something like this. Yeah, well, what was that again? What was that all about? Um, I'm a Canadian originally. But yes. Um, <laughs> well, I do not. Okay, I think, I, yes, I, I know that uh, particular clipping. Uh, Canada was running for a seat in the Security Council. And to be elected to the Security Council, you need the votes from all member states from, in the General Assembly. 
So it's not like in other uh, smaller committees that you uh, decide within your regional group that you know U.S., Mexico, Canada gets together and say, okay, it's Canada's time uh, this time. For a Security Council, you need to be elected uh, globally by all uh, uh, member states. Now, of course, is that a majority? Yeah, I think so. It? Yeah, I mean, yeah. majority. Majority. No, you never get a. No, you never get a vote in that, and it's not required. <laughs> Uh, I don't know the particular procedural rules on how that works for the Security Council. I do know it is one of the hottest tickets to get as a member state. They fight very hard for it, the member states. They treat and lobby each other. You know, there's, you know, there's boats on the East River, there's parties, there's events, yeah. there's, uh, there's promises of development assistance to African countries uh, from all the Western societies. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's a tough battle. It's similar to, you know, getting in the Olympic Society or the World Cup. I mean, it is, it is very prestigious. But apparently they had a seat made possible. Yeah. No, well, I think what uh, happened is that Canada had uh, always run and gotten it in the past, in the history of the UN. And this was the first time that Canada ran right. and lost it because there were two other countries, I think, Brazil and a small Central American country from the Latin America group. And it would be two out of three seats. And of course, uh, I don't know, I mean, the Canadian government now has been, there were elections. We do have a right-wing government now in the Canada, what I understand. Probably a bit more pro-Israel than the previous one. But he came right out and said, I'm, this, I'm yeah. pro-Israel. And yeah. he said he's taking a big risk. And he it does take a risk because, I mean, Israel has one vote in the UN's General Assembly. And as you know, a lot of Arab states have one vote each. So, I mean, then it becomes a number of math. Right. And, uh, that I think it was what I hear from other Canadians who, you know, as colleagues, they tell me that you know they didn't lobby hard enough, and this was just an excuse after they lost the vote. But I just don't know the fine parts of that. No, yes, but it is true uh, that um, Israel is a uh, is sometimes under siege in the UN. For what, what is that? What did you just say? Israel is sometimes under siege at the UN. Siege, yeah. Under siege. Yeah. It's like, isn't the prophecy 70 wolves against one lamb, and the lamb is Israel, and the rest of the 70 nations of the world all well, taking on a piece out of Israel? I mean, I, no, that is, is, yeah. Uh, you, I mean, these are your words, not mine. I mean, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. But, uh, yes, of course, there's uh, a lot of disagreement on these things. Yes. But hopefully, we, uh, the, the idea of the UN is to bring unity. Yes. And, and, uh, and it is imperfect. Oh, right, it is and imperfect. If we stop having the UN today, we will have, I mean, it is a platitude, but we will need a new one starting tomorrow. But, yeah, okay, I agree with that. I, I think, I think uh, the, the ultimate unity, the ultimate UN was in, was in Noah's boat. Uh, yes. <laughs> but then uh, when, when, when the lamb and the, and the sheep all lie together, <laughs> and they all, they all, they all, and everyone, and the wives, the men, the, everyone managed to live in, under one roof, I think that was the ultimate unity. Well, but you can't see the world as one big boat. And uh, right, I right, think right, we, right. we need to and, uh, sail on. Uh, sail like, on. And, and uh, let's hope that we witness that. Any more questions? Would you like to... Um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Abe. Uh, if the rabbi gets an invite, I'd like to get one too, if possible, sure. just to come and listen. I've never been there. It's uh, only 30 blocks south. Or if the rabbi can't make it, I would love an invite <laughs> if an outsider could get in yeah, if it, with it, an invitation. To hear a debate about maybe something like this, whether involving Israel or not. Yeah, well, it's possible. I mean, uh, well, any tourist can do a tour. Right. Uh, that's part of the rabbi's uh, uh, process that he's now doing. He's, he's, he has an application for accreditation. Oh. If that gets through, then mm -hmm. you know you have full full year access. You come and collect the pass, and you walk in. No mm -hmm. questions asked. And that's the battle that he's sure. fighting. Yeah. When you can vote, that's already no, 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 yeah, Voting yeah, is probably yeah, yeah, that's that's already, yeah. it's certainly out of the question. But, uh, yeah. but you know, listen, we can voice, we can tell the world about the Torah's opinion, Torah's view of yeah. God's oneness and how to achieve unity. And this is a timeless, timeless, been around for thousands of years, the Jewish people and, and the Torah. It's a living Torah. It's a Torah for light, <coughs> to bring light to all nations. Yeah. And it's our, our duty as Jews be a light onto nations, not in an arrogant way, but in a very in a responsible way, that we have to illuminate the world with the Torah. Absolutely. And the Torah is a guiding light, yeah. as a being an example of, of a lighthouse. You know, a lighthouse guides all ships into port, whether it's Jewish, 
Torah. The Torah is in Beit Al like a lighthouse. It guides Jewish people into port, non-Jewish people. It, it's, it, 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 it protects the ships from smashing into each other. Mm -hmm. And it, put, and it gives us a way of life, a means to live by. Torah, Torah's Hedor, actually live by. But especially now, as we're coming closer, fortunately, yes. I think, to the precipice. To what? To the precipice. Iran, maybe North Korea, and possibly the rest of the world. Today in the Senate, they ratified a treaty between yeah. Russia and the United States, and they kept on mentioning that we will be fully armed against Iran and the North Korea. So to avoid such a cataclysm, hopefully something good will come at the UN. Hopefully. I hope so too. We hope so too. You know, well, listen, we can only try. We keep trying. We keep every day. Every day we have to try. Little victory. One little, <laughs> and start one, one step at a time. Yeah, one little victory after the other.